very odd. Absolutely. Did that girl in the blue hat remind you of someone? Uh, no. Oh, no, of course not. You haven't met her, so it wouldn't. Met who? Well, this girl I'm talking about. No. She's a wonderful girl. How's Angela? Don't talk to me about Angela. Oh, right. So, what do you think the fellow with the gammy leg from the war is going to do in Act Two? Your cousin Angela is an A1 scourge, if you must know. Oh, come, come, Tommy. This is my favourite cousin you're talking about. You know she's given me the push. No. She has. Simply because I was man enough to speak out candidly on the subject of a... Yes. ghastly hat she was jump enough to buy. <laughs> what do you mean, fuh? Well, all I said was it made her look like a raccoon peering out from underneath a flower pot. Which it did. Yes, well, they're not all picking on fearless honesty, I find. Well, your cousin Angela certainly isn't. Uh, not about hats, anyway. Anyway, I've been down at Bleaching Court for the last week. You know, trying to forget. It's a Reginald Dalglish's place. I'm going to be staying there this weekend. Yes, I know. You'll be able to meet them. Um... Yes, well, never mind. Meet? Meet who? Cheers. Dash it, Jeeves. I wish you'd at least put it on another table for a change. Sir? I mean, every day, the same old time, you come in with the same old tray and put it on the same old table. I'm just fed up with the monotony. It's the bally balliness of it all that makes it all seem so bally bally. Would you like me to put it on another table, sir? No, 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 Jeeves. No, I'm not blaming you. No, it's just. Oh, by Jove. I mean to say, I've been. I've been thinking pretty deeply these last few days, Jeeves, and. Uh... Well, I've come to the conclusion that mine is an empty life, Jeeves. I'm lonely. You have a great many friends, sir. Well, yes, I know, but I... You know that play? Oh, what was his dash name? The one I, the one I saw last night. No, sir. Uh, it's not the what you call it. Anyway, the hero's a chap who's, who's buzzing along through life, you know, quite, quite merry and bright. Uh, apart from his gammy leg from the war. And all of a sudden, this kid turns up and uh, says that she's his daughter. Uh, left over from Act One. Uh, it's absolutely the first he's ever heard of it. Uh, so obviously there's a, there's a bit of a fuss, and uh, they say to him, what ho? And he says, what ho? And uh, anyway, he takes the kid, and they go off together out into the world. Very inspiring, sir. Yes, well, well I thought so, yes. Well, what I'm driving at, Jeeves, is that, you know, I, I envied that chappy. You know, having a jolly little girl clinging to him, trusting me and whatnot. Someone to look after, if you know what I mean. You know, I wish I had a daughter. I wonder what the procedure is. Marriage is, I believe, sir, the preliminary step for those willing to undergo its rigors. Yeah. Yes, I suppose so. Oh, well. this, Jeeves, from Mr. Glossop. Indeed, sir. When you come down, bring my rugger boots. Also, Irish water spaniel. Urgent. Regards, Tuppy. You know, I'm worried about Mr. Glossop, Jeeves. From the way he was talking last night, I got the distinct impression that he's gone and got himself involved with that uh, dull Gleish girl down in Bleaching. Indeed, sir. Yes, apparently he's had some sort of bust-up with my cousin Angela. But I mean to say, Jeeves, if a girl can't, in the course of ordinary, everyday conversation, tell a chap to go and boil his head, without said chap turning to the arms of another. Well, I mean, where are we, Jeeves? Where indeed, sir? No, well, I think we owe it to my cousin Angela to prize Tuppy apart from this interloper. Very good, sir. Alors, Jeeves, les gants de monsieur, le chapeau de monsieur, et le hoigny de monsieur. I tell you what, Jeeves. Sir? In Ray, our recent discussion, uh, children, pattering feet and so forth, I could always marry Bobby Wickham. Get started that way. Uh Oh, no, Jeeves, I, I know we had an unfortunate experience the last time I was going to propose to her, but uh, she's a good egg, Jeeves, you can't deny that. Well, sir... She's playing at the, uh, the South Hearts Ladies Tennis Championship today. Book us a couple of rooms at the local caravanserai, and we'll pop in and see her on the way down to Bleaching. Very good, sir. Jeeves! Yes, sir? There is a tone that comes into your voice whenever I mention Miss Wickham. If I didn't know you better, I'd almost call it a sigh. Oh, no, sir, I assure you... Well, try and eradicate it, Jeeves. 
Very good, sir. Mm. Miss Wickham is an absolute corker, and as such, is a worthy mother to my children. She may have her faults, but she's absolutely chock full to the brim with fizz and ginger. Precisely, sir. Uh, that uh, is... uh, uh, Jeeves. Very good, sir. Bertie! Bingo! I was just on my way to fight you, Bertie. I wanted to ask you a question. Ask away, Bingo. Do you like the name Mabel? No. Oh. You don't think it has a certain music in it, like the wind rustling gently through the treetops? Uh, no. Oh. Oh, well, you wouldn't, of course. You always wear a fat head without any soul, won't you? Come on, I'll take it to have lunch with her. the right place, Bingo. Sit down, Bertie. Ah. Aren't, aren't we going to wait for um... Hello, Mabel. Hello. This is Bertie Worcester, a pal of mine. Pleased to meet you. Oh, hello, Mabel. You see, I'm wearing the tie. Suits you beautiful. What's it going to be today, then? I'll have my usual. Cocoa, feeling empire, slice of fruitcake and a macaroon. You remember. Same for you, sir. No, no, no. I'll just have a uh, roll of butter and a cup of coffee, please. Right. Well, very nice. You don't think she's the most beautiful girl you ever saw? Absolutely. <laughs> so what I thought was, Bertie, if you don't object, I'd like to put my problem to Jeeves. What problem? My Uncle Mortimer, of course, you poor fish. What do you think he's going to say to my marrying Mabel? Oh, you're going to get married, are you? Of course we're going to get married. Oh, that's a coincidence. Because I've decided I'm going to marry Bobby Wickham. Oh, never mind that. He'll tie himself in knots on the hearth rug. Yeah. One of these emotional Johnnies, is he? I'm pretty well dependent on the old boy. If he cuts off my allowance, I shall be very much in the soup. Somehow or other, his mind has got to be prepared to receive the news. But how? Uh. Oh, that's a fat lot of help. We'll soon have you sorted out, Bingo. Good heavens, Jesus. Is that an Irish water spaniel? Uh, no, sir. No such animal was available at short notice. I thought an Irish wolfhound would make an acceptable approximation. Well, I don't know, Jeeves. Toppy was pretty specific in his telegram. Ah, uh, what about the rugaboos? I collected them from his housekeeper, sir. Good, good. Uh, well, Bingo's got a bit of a problem, Jeeves. Delicate subject, Jeeves, as a matter of fact. Very good, sir. Jeeves? What on earth's the matter, Jeeves? Jeeves? <coughs> I apologise, sir. It was unforgivable of me. I shall be better directly. It's just Mr. Little's tie, sir. It has little horseshoes on it. Oh, yes, yes, I noticed that. Hmm. It's sometimes difficult just to shrug these things off, sir. However, <clears throat> what was it, sir, uh, that Mr. Little needed advice on? It's about his uncle. Would that be Lord Bittlesham, who lives in Pounceby Gardens, sir? How do you know he lives in Pounceby Gardens? <clears throat> I'm on terms of some intimacy with Lord Bittlesham's cook, sir. In fact, there is an understanding. Do you mean you're engaged? It might be said to amount to that, sir, yes. Huh. Well, well, well. She is an excellent cook, sir. <laughs> sir. My Uncle Mortimer is quite likely to cut off my allowance, so you see penury is staring me in the face, Jeeves. One thing does occur, sir. I was speaking to Lord Bittlesham's valet only the other day, and he was telling me that it has become his principal duty to read to Lord Bittlesham in the evenings. If I were you, sir, I would volunteer to take over that particular task. Ah, old man moved by nephew's kindly action, you mean? Partly that, sir. I was relying, however, more on Mr. Little's choice of literature. If you were to read to your uncle day by day a series of narratives in which marriage of young persons of inferior social status is held up to be both admirable and feasible, then I fancy it might prepare Lord Bittlesham's mind for the news that his nephew wishes to marry a waitress in a tea shop. Uh, well, are there any books like that nowadays? Oh, a great many, sir. Have you never encountered The Courtship of Lord Strathmorlick by Rosie N. Banks? Nope. Nor Only a Factory Girl by the same author? Never. 
My aunt owns almost a complete set of Rosie M. Banks, sir. I could easily borrow as many volumes as you might require. They make light, attractive reading. All right, then, Jeeves, you toddle off to your aunt's and grab a couple of the fruitiest. May as well give it a dash, eh? What do you say, Bingo? Oh, anything. Anything, Bertie. I'll start straight away. Right, take the luggage round to the hotel, Jeeves, and I'll see you later. Very good, sir. And uh, wish me luck with Miss Wickham, Jeeves. I do, sir. I do. Most happily. Have you been, Bertie? My match starts in five minutes. This is my cousin, Clementina. You're to look after her till I've finished. Wish me luck. Well, oh, Clementina. Was that your car that you came in? With the dog? Yes. My father's got a bent here. Really? Oh, well, I may as well ankle over and watch the match, eh? They've got strawberries in the tea tent. Um... Right, now you better hurry up and eat those or we'll miss the match. You didn't get any lemonade. One. Excuse me. Sorry. Game to Miss Wickham. Miss Wickham leads four games to three. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. Sorry. Do it again. We are awfully good of you to rally round, Bertie. We're not going. I promised to take Clementina to tea. Oh, yes, yes. I expect you'll need some nourishment, yes. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. But, Bobby, uh, there, was, uh, there was something I wanted to say to you. You can give me dinner at the Mariners, if you like. Bye. This may well be it, Jeeves. It, sir? Pitching the woo, Jeeves. Not to rule out popping the question. The lights will be low, the wine will be flowing. <clears throat> I'm sure I wish you every good fortune, sir. I only hope that the dog will not impede your endeavours. Patrick? Patrick will be warmly ensconced in your room, Jeeves. Uh, it is, if you recall, sir, my evening off. I had promised myself a quiet evening with an improving book. Well, can't you spend an evening with an improving dog? Mm, he will pine for you, sir. He pined most pathetically this afternoon. He becomes excitable when he pines. Well, come along, Patrick. Come on, Bobby. She's forgotten, Patrick. I know it. Hello, Mr. Worcester. Are we late? No, no. Uh, uh, this is Patrick. Clementina loves animals. Of course, she's not allowed to have them at school. Well, what can you expect of a dump like St. Monica's? No, no. He's sweet. Uh, Bobby, I, um... <clears throat> I wanted to ask you something. You shouldn't let the waiters tease the dog like that. No, no, I suppose not. Oh, Bobby, there comes a time in a man's life... Are we going to have ice cream? And a double 19 to finish, I think. Thank you, 
you gentlemen. Most enjoyable. Wherever did you learn to play like that, Mr. Jeeves? One picks these things up as one passes through life, my dear. That was lovely, Bertie. Oh, well, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Bobby, because, uh, well, what I mean to say is... Do you think Patrick would be sick if we gave him some ice cream? Yes. Uh, Bobby, we've known each other a long time, and... Excuse me, Miss Wickham, your car is here. Oh, oh no. Look at the time. Car? I'll just catch the 9.45 if I hurry. I absolutely promised to go to a party tonight in London. Party? But... Oh, Bertie, could you do me a terrific favour? Well, yes, all right. Take Clementine back to school for me, will you? School? Oh, bless you, Bert. You're an angel in human form. Well... Oh, there is one thing. One thing? Clementine's meant to be in bed. Oh, you didn't come out without leave. Oh, now, look, Bobby. Oh, you must learn not to fuss so, Bertie. Oh, I must, must I? It's perfectly simple. First, you need a good long piece of string. You know what string is, don't you? Certainly, as in string. Good. You take the string with you, and when you get to the garden, Claire will show you where you find the flower pots. Grab one of those and then go to the conservatory. Beside the conservatory, there's a tree. Climb this tree and while... Hold on a minute. I really don't have time for you to keep on interrupting, Bertie. Climb the tree, tie the string onto the flower pot. Climb down the tree, holding onto the string, retire to a safe distance, and then let go. The flower pot drops and smashes the glass. While someone comes out to investigate, Clem sneaks in and goes up to bed. All right? Tree, flower pot, conservatory, string. Ah, Jeeves. <clears throat> so, what happened to the quiet evening with an improving book? I felt the need for a change of air, sir. Ah, well, Jeeves, now you'll no doubt be surprised to learn that something in the nature of a hitch has occurred. Did your proposal meet with a sympathetic ear, sir? No, it did not, Jeeves. As a matter of fact, it didn't meet with any ear at all. Right, now, as it's your night off, Jeeves, your part in the proceedings is simplicity itself. You just have to sit here and look after Patrick. Very good, sir. Um, a thought has just occurred to me, sir. This is no time for thought, Jeeves. Come along, Clementina. The conservatory's over there. And that's where the flower pots are. Right. Well, uh, goodbye, Clementina. Good luck. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> Barbara tossed her auburn curls rebelliously. Her dark eyes flashed. Her father might be only a mill hand, but she had the pride of the Ormskirks. That same pride that had prompted her grandfather, old Stanley Ormskirk, to stand firm. When threatened with eviction from his humble cottage by Lord Granchester for refusing to doff his cap. 
headmistress to see the prisoner, Constable. Very good, Sarge. I am so sorry, Mr. Worcester. This is a disgrace. Oh, right. I shall be eternally grateful for the trouble you have taken. Well, you know. <laughs> you have behaved with great courage. You identify this man, Miss Mapleton? Identify him? Of course I identify him. You are an imbecile officer. You have bungled this whole affair by mistaking Mr. Worcester for a burglar. He was up a tree, ma'am. Of course he was up a tree. No doubt you had climbed the tree in order to watch the better, Mr. Worcester. Uh, y y yes, yes, that's right, absolutely. To, to, to watch the better. Got it in one. The officer is a fool, Mr. Worcester. By this time, no doubt, thanks to his idiocy, the miscreants you spotted have made good their escape. Probably. Mm. Release Mr. Worcester at once, Sergeant. Release this man, Constable. Perhaps I should drive Miss Stapleton to the school zone. Uh, well, yes, of course. No, no, I intend to walk. Perhaps I shall catch sight of those desperados as I go. Good night, Mr. Worcester. Good night. Mr. Jeeves, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you very much, ma'am. Now, Jeeves, perhaps you'll be good enough to explain to me what on earth has been going on. <clears throat> it occurred to me, sir, that the most judicious course of action was simply for me to ring the doorbell and request an interview with Miss Mapleton. And while the maid had gone to inform her mistress, to introduce Miss Clementina into the house unobserved. Uh, and you told the old dragon that I was on my way to call on her and was now out in the garden chivying burglars with my bare hands. Precisely, sir. Oh, Jeeves, I should have been guided by you from the first. It might have spared some temporary unpleasantness, sir. Mm. Talking of which, Jeeves, you know, I've been thinking about adoption. Adoption, sir? Yes, I mean, adopting a kid. You can adopt them, you know. And it saves all this marriage malarkey. Uh, but what I want to know is how to start about it. The process, I imagine, is highly complicated and laborious, sir. It would cut into your spare time. Well, it wouldn't cut into it half as much as marrying Miss Wickham. Oh, by the way, Jeeves, what did Miss Mapleton mean about seeing us tomorrow? Um, in order to lend verisimilitude to my story, sir, I informed her that you were a renowned orator, sir, currently on a tour of the home counties. Good Lord, Jeeves. <clears throat> Upon learning this, uh, Miss Mapleton was most anxious for you to address the girls of the school. I didn't like to disappoint her. What? I hope I did the right thing, sir. Girls, I have a treat in store for you this morning. One of our great public speakers has taken time from his busy schedule to address you with a few words of wisdom. Mr. Bertram Worcester. Mr. Worcester will give you a few words of advice which may be helpful to you in afterlife. Uh, right, yes. Uh, well, um, uh, yes, uh, now, uh, here's something that's, uh, that's often done me a bit of good, uh, and it's something that not many people know. Uh, yes, well, anyway, um, my Uncle Henry uh, gave me the tip when I, when I first came to London. Uh, never forget, my boy, he said, that, uh, that if you stand outside Romano's in the Strand, uh, you can see the clock on the wall of the law courts down in Fleet Street. Now, most people who don't know this, 
wouldn't think it was possible because there are a couple of hefty looking churches in the middle of the road and uh, you'd think they'd get in the way but they don't you can and uh, it's well it's, it's worth knowing uh, you can win a lot of money he used to say uh, by betting on it with fellows who 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 haven't found it out <laughs> and, uh, by Jove, he was absolutely right um it, it really is a thing to remember um yes many's the many's the quid i've won <coughs> Uh, but perhaps, Mr. Worcester, a little story might be in order. Some anecdote to illustrate the benefits of hard work, study, and healthy living. A story, right. <sighs> Who? Um, if I can remember stories. Uh, oh, yes, no, no, here, here's, here's one I heard recently. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it seems that there was this chorus girl, <laughs> and she met this stockbroker. And uh, he said to her. Wasn't that splendid, girls? We will now sing the school song. Let's go, Jeeves. Your address was successful, I trust, sir? Oh, yes, yes, went like a breeze. Ah, uh, we're gonna move on, Jeeves. The tall, young man smiled crookedly, lifting his oil-grimed hands in helpless apology. Myrtle's eyes flashed. She tossed her blonde curls. She was not to know that this figure in stained overalls and with a worn cloth cap set at a jaunty angle atop a head of unruly curls was the 14th Earl Strathmonic of Strathmonic, Lord High Keeper of Danoon Castle and Laird of 10,000 fertile acres in his native Dumfrieshire. I do trust that your experience in St. Monica's has not spoilt your taste for the adoption of young girls, eh? Well, I must confess it has given me pause, Jeeves. Am I wrong in thinking that all little girls are hard-bitten thugs of the worst description? Your definition is sadly near the truth, sir. <clears throat> but we must console ourselves with the thought that life without the blessings of children does have its compensations. No, Jeeves. No, no, no. no I'm, I'm too young to give in to such cynicism. I'm an idealist, Jeeves. Very good, sir. My sister, Mrs. Schofield, is coming back from India soon. She's the one with the, with the three little girls. I refuse to believe that my own kith and kin can be described as hard-bitten thug. We Worcesters may have our faults, but hard-bitten thuggery has never been one of them. Well, sir. I can give up the flat and take a house for them all to come and live with us. Indeed, sir. I can be a proper uncle to them. The largish corn fed girl, Jeeves? Yes, sir. Typical tuppy fodder. Even at this distance, one can tell that his ears are distinctly pinkish. <laughs> Hello, Bertie. Hello, Tuppy. This is Miss Stalglish. How do you do? Hello. Mummy and Daddy are in the sitting room, I think, if you want some tea. <laughs> what on earth's that? It's an Irish wolfhound. It's for you. That's no good to me. I asked for an Irish water spaniel. Well, they run out. Oh, really, Bertie? You coming, Hildebrand? Uh, yes, yes, I'm. Uh, I'm just coming, Daisy. <laughs> Sinister, Jeeves. You noticed that the subject was looking like a stuffed frog. There is something renine in Mr. Glossop's aspect, sir. Yes particularly about the eyes. Precisely, Jeeves. I think our fears are justified. The thing seems serious. Have you ran at all, Toppy? No, I have not. And I have no wish to hear from a little blighter. Yeah. Angela's awfully fond of you, you know. Oh, is she indeed? Well, she's got a dash funny way of showing it. Yes, well, they do have, Toppy. They, they, they don't like us. Uh, in passing, old boy, what did you want with a water spaniel? I wanted to give it to Daisy. Look, Bertie, I might as well tell you. I'm in love at last. It's a real thing. Oh, how different she is, Bertie, from those hothouse artificial London girls. I mean, would they stand all afternoon in the mud watching a rugger match? Would they know what to give an Alsatian for fits? I mean, would they tramp ten miles a day across the fields and come back as fresh as paint? No. Why should they? Oh, 
you wouldn't understand, Bertie. Anyway, she set her heart on an Irish water spaniel. It's a dash nuisance you couldn't get one. Oh, give her your rugger boots. Oh, by the way, what did you want them for? I happen to be playing in a match tomorrow. Upper Bleaching versus Hockley come Meston. Well, Daisy was rather keen that I help Upper Bleaching out. Yeah. So you'll be playing for Hockley? <laughs> Very funny. No, it's not like an ordinary rugger match. In fact, it's not really rugby at all. Apart from anything else, they play in the middle of summer. And the two villages absolutely loathe each other. And the rules are a bit more, well, um, relaxed. It started long before rugby was invented. The first game was played in Henry VIII's time, you know. Lasted from noon till sunset, and seven players were killed. Killed? And two spectators. Oh, but it's not like that anymore, Daddy. Three years since anybody actually died, isn't it? Yes, I know. Still, damn good fun, though. Hildebrand's going to be the hero of the village. Eileen tossed her dark curls scornfully. Perhaps she did only work in a cigarette shop. Perhaps her dress was thin, cheap cotton and patched and worn, too. Nevertheless, she had her pride. The name Ormerod was an old one. Since time immemorial, there had been Ormerods in Blackchester. What did she care for the Fazakalis with their fancy ways? The citizenry of Upper Bleaching seem to look forward to this match each year, Jeeves as a chance to settle old scores with a neighbouring village. A common enough circumstance in the sporting world, Sam. Yeah, so we must act swiftly in order to save Tuppy. He refuses to do the sensible thing and slide out. Because the girl will be watching the game, and he says it'll make him feel like a knight of old, jousting under the eyes of his lady. It does sound like an acute case, Sam. Yeah, so we must employ Doyle. You'll go to London first thing in the morning, Jeeves, and send a telegram, signed Angela, which will read as follows. What would a girl say, Jeeves, who, having had a row with the bird she was engaged to because he said that she looked like a raccoon in her new hat, wanted to extend the olive branch? If I might suggest, sir, I fancy the following, as from Miss Angela's mother, might meet the case. Return immediately, Angela seriously ill and delirious, calling your name piteously and saying something about you being right about the hat. Catch the earliest possible train, Dahlia Travers. Yes, well, well, well done, Jeeves, yes. Just one more spot of devilish cunning. Send it off in time for it to arrive at 2.30. By then, top people have started for the ground. I'll take it down and hand it to him during some lull in the battle. By that time, he'll have discovered what sort of rugged match he's in for. Isn't 
He's a damn fool. You ought to read it once. If I were you, I'd just say a few quick words of farewell to the murder squad and come back to the house right away. Do you think I'm going to slink away under her very eyes? Good God! Besides, I'm not leaving the field until I've thoroughly disemboweled that blonde-haired bounder. Do you notice the way he keeps on tackling me when I haven't got the ball? Isn't that right? Of course it's not right! Well, I'll tell you one thing. A bitter retribution awaits that bird, Bertie. From now on, I'm going to assert my personality. What, no, Tuppy, I, I really think you ought to come and read the telegram. with my uncle tomorrow. Why should I have lunch with your uncle? Because he wants you to. Me? Does not I exist? Oh, yes, he does. I've told him about you. Oh, what have you told him? Oh, various things. Where's Daisy? She's not here, old chap. I had to go to London. I'll tell her you were asking. Well played, by the by. What did she go to London for? Well, she got this message. Yes, sir. I arrived shortly after the second half, well in time to see Mr. Glossop score his try. Try? Oh, my gosh, Chief. Well, that means we've failed. Miss Dalgleish will be all over him, calling him a hero. I doubt that, sir. Really, Jeeves? I say, Jeeves, that wheeze of yours of reading to my uncle was an absolute corker. Thank you, sir. Excuse me. Excuse me. Tuppy, what happened? I've broken my leg, that's what's happened. And she wasn't even there. Hello, Tuppy. I haven't seen you for ages. I've met this most wonderful girl, Tuppy, at Mabel, her name is. I mean, you wouldn't believe how beautiful she is. I swept myself to the boat first. I allow a mob of homicidal lunatics to, to kick me in the ribs and stroll about all over my face. And what do I find? She hasn't even bothered to say to the end of the game. Mabel's very fond of football. Oh, no, 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 no. She gets a message from someone in London who tells her he's got an Irish water spaniel for sale. So, of course, up she pops in her car, leaving me flat. Mabel's brother plays for Woolwich Arsenal, as a matter of fact. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Might I inquire, sir, are we proposing to return to the metropolis tomorrow? Uh, yes, I think so. Any particular reason? I have an appointment tomorrow afternoon that I'm anxious not to miss, sir. It was you, wasn't it, Jeeves? Sir? Who told Miss, uh, 
Uh, what's her belly name about the alleged water spaniel? Yes. Sir. Yes, I thought I detected the touch. You knew she'd go buzzing up to London and miss the game? Yes, sir. Yes, and you knew how Tuppy would react. If there's one thing that gives a jousting knight the pip, it's having his audience walk out on him. Very true, sir. Mm. There she is, see? Now she's got her blasted Irish water spaniel. She can't even be bothered to say goodbye to me. Open the door. <coughs> oh. Do you know she had the almighty gall to come and visit me in hospital last night? Did I ever tell you about the time Mabel and I went to the races at Sandown? Then all she could talk about was that blasted animal. Ugly beast, if you ask my opinion. Mabel would never do that. Mabel and I have a code. And to think I fancied I loved a girl like that. I mean, a perfect life partner she'd make, I don't think. I mean, if you married a girl like that, she'd be bringing you home from Siberian Eelhound before you knew it. Oh, Tubby, I forgot to give you your telegram. <sighs> oh, what a wonderful girl she is. Who's that, Tubby? Well, Angela, of course. Oh, really? Oh, she understands me, Bertie. She understands me like no other girl in the world. What I can't understand, Bingo, is why your uncle should ask a fellow to lunch when he's never seen. Uh, well, to tell you the truth, Bertie, I want you to spring the news on him about my marrying Mabel. Having the nerve myself. What? Hang if I do. Good morning, Mr. Little. His lordship is expecting you. No, now, if you think that... Mr. Worcester, I am proud, I am gratified, I am honoured. Oh, ah. So young to have accomplished so much. Well, you know. Yes, well, we can uh, talk properly over lunch. Miss Watson has prepared a very special repast. Oh, Richard, little Margaret will be having lunch with us. I hope you don't mind. I'll uh, just go and fetch her. What's he talking about? Oh, Margaret's my little cousin. She's all right. No, no, I mean about me having accomplished something or other. I haven't accomplished anything. Have I? The fact is, Bertie, I know you won't mind. I told him you were the author of those books I've been reading to him. What? I said Rosie M. Banks was your pen name. He'll listen to you now, absolutely hang on your words. But... Pitch it strong, Bertie, and keep steadily before you the fact that my allowance must be raised. What amazes me, Mr. Worcester, is that a man so young as you should be able to plumb human nature so surely to its depths. To play with so unerring a hand upon the quivering heartstrings of your reader. Oh, just a knack. How many words are there in a novel, Mr. Worcester? Words? Oh, well, I, I never count. Just let it all come, that's what I say. Well, how many are there on a page? On a page? Uh, well, uh, 20 or 30. I mean, it depends on the page. Um, about 200. About a thousand, more or less. I mean, you, I mean, you're on, on a single page, I mean. Yes, uh, about 10,000. I mean, that would be one of the bigger pages. Um, you've got a book handy. Oh, it's not important, Mr. Wister. What is important, Margaret? It's Mr. Worcester's splendid defiance of the outworn fetishes of a purblind social system. In the magnificent words of Lord Latchmore in um, Only a Factory Girl, be her origins ne'er so humble, a good woman is equal to the finest lady on earth. Ah, so you think it's all right for a chap in what you might call a certain social position to marry a girl of what you might call the lower classes? Oh, assuredly, Mr. Worcester. Bingo wants to marry a waitress. <clears throat> Richard? I honour you. You don't object? On the contrary. Well, I, I, I hope you don't think I'm butting in here, but uh, his allowance and all that, he was, he was rather hoping that you might see your way clear to jerking up the total a bit. Oh, I fear that can hardly be managed. It would not be fair to my wife. But you're not married, Uncle. Not yet, but I intend to enter that holy state almost immediately. Under the influence of Mr. Worcester's splendid books, I have persuaded Miss Watson, the lady who for so many years has cooked so wonderfully for me, to accept my hand in marriage.
Thou art Jesus. No, sir. This is jolly nice. I mean, looking at the clock and... Wondering if you're going to be late for the good old drinks and then you coming in with a tray always exactly on time and shoving it down on the table and then biffing off and then the next night coming in, shoving it down, biffing off and then the next night... Uh, gives one a sort of safe, restful feeling. Soothing, that's the word. It is soothing, isn't it, Sam? Mm. Nevertheless, Jeeves, I must ask you to brace up and bite the bullet. I'm afraid I have bad news for you, Jeeves. That scheme of yours about reading those books to Bingo's uncle, well, I'm afraid it's, uh, it's blown out of fuse. They did not soften him, sir? Uh, they did, Jeeves. That's the whole bally problem. I'm sorry to say that your fiancé, Miss Watson, uh, you know, the cook. Well, the, uh, the long and the short of it is, Jeeves, that she appears to have chosen riches instead of honest worth, if you know what I mean. Sir? Well, she has handed you the mitten and gone off and got engaged to Lord Bittlesham. Indeed, sir. Well, you don't seem very upset, Jeeves. To tell the truth, sir, I was not wholly averse to the severance of my relations with Miss Watson. I respect Miss Watson exceedingly, but I've seen for some time that she and I were not suited. Now, the other young person with whom I have an understanding... Good Lord, Jeeves. There isn't another. Yes, sir. By an odd coincidence, sir, it is the same young person in whom Mr. Little has been so interested. Of Mabel? Yes. So. Good Lord, James. Well, poor old Bingo. Shall I contact the estate agents tomorrow, sir? Estate agents, Jeeves? I understood that it was your intention to take a house of sufficient size for Mrs. Schofield and her three young ladies to live with you. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. That's all off, Jeeves. No. Young ladies? Fiends, Jeeves. Fiends, every one of them. No, how they ever grow up into those adorable creatures that we know and love, I cannot fathom. No, I shall continue the monk-like existence which has characterized my life hitherto. Very good, sir. Oh, uh, perhaps another small whiskey and soda might be called for. Very good, sir. <sighs>